The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Their mother could not keep them, so she sent them out to seek their fortunes. The first little pig met a man who had a bundle of straw. Will you give me some of that straw? asked the pig. The man gave him some straw, and the little pig set to work building a house. He was finished in no time at all. Before long, the wolf was at the door. He called out, Little pig! Little pig! Let me come in! But the little pig answered, No, not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, cried the wolf. Then he huffed, and he puffed, and <laughs> he blew the house in, and he ate up the little pig. The second little pig met a man who had a bundle of sticks. Will you give me some of those sticks? asked the pig. The man gave him some sticks, and the little pig set to work building a house. He was finished in a very short time. Before long, the wolf came along. He knocked at the door and called. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the little pig answered, No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, cried the wolf. Then he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed. <sighs> He blew the house in, and he ate up the second little pig. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. Will you give me some of those bricks? asked the pig. The man gave him some bricks, and the pig set to work building a house. <laughs> It took a long time, but finally, he was finished. Then along came the wolf. He knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the little pig answered, No. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, cried the wolf. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed. <gasps> Then he huffed, and he puffed some more. <gasps> but he could not blow the house in. Then the wolf thought of another idea. Little pig, little pig, he called. I know where there are some delicious turnips. Where? asked the little pig. Not far from here, in a farmer's field, replied the wolf. If you will be ready tomorrow morning at six o'clock, I will show you where they are. All right, agreed the pig. But he got up at five o'clock the next morning and went to find the turnips by himself. At six o'clock, the wolf knocked on the pig's door. Are you ready? he called. Am I ready? <laughs> Laughed the little pig. I have already been there and back. 
Now I have all the turnips I can use. So the wolf thought up a different plan. Little pig, little pig, he called. I know of an apple tree that is loaded with apples. Which one do you mean? Asked the little pig, and the wolf replied, "It is far down the road. If you will be ready at five o'clock tomorrow morning, I will show you where it is." The pig got up at four o'clock the next morning and found the apples by himself. But he was still up in the tree when the wolf arrived. So there you are, called the wolf. Why didn't you wait for me? The little pig called down. I have been saving the best apples for you. Here, I will throw one down. But he threw it so far that the wolf had to chase after it. Then the little pig jumped down from the tree and ran all the way home with a sack full of apples. The next morning, the wolf knocked on the little pig's door. Little pig, little pig, he called. There is a fair in town. Would you care to go there with me? And the pig replied, "Yes, of course. What time will you be ready?" At three o'clock this afternoon," said the wolf. "I will be ready for you," replied the little pig. Then, as soon as the wolf had gone home, the little pig went down to the fair by himself. He bought a butter churn and was on his way home when he saw the wolf coming. So he climbed into the butter churn and rolled down the hill toward the wolf. Whoa! This frightened the wolf so much that he ran all the way home. The next day, the wolf knocked on the little pig's door and said, "Yesterday, while I was walking to the fair, a great round thing came rumbling and tumbling down at me." It frightened me quite out of my wits. <laughs> the little pig laughed. Then you were frightened by me. You see, I went to the fair and bought a butter churn. When I saw you coming, I climbed into the churn and rolled down the hill. This made the wolf so angry <laughs> that he said he would come down the chimney and eat up the pig. Then he got a ladder and climbed up on the roof. Meanwhile, the little pig built a big fire in the fireplace. He hung a huge pot of water over the fire. Before long, the water was boiling and bubbling. The wolf came down the chimney, whoa, and fell right into the pot. Then the little pig put the cover on and made a delicious stew, which he had for supper that very night. And of course, he lived happily ever after. The end. Tricky Alex. Alex was an elf. He was a tricky elf. He liked to play tricks on everybody. Alex had a lot of friends. He played tricks on his friends, and some of his tricks were not very nice. Alex played a trick on Mr. Wizard, the little elf hid by the brook. Along came Mr. Wizard. He did not see Alex. Out jumped the elf. Boo! Yelled Alex. Splash! Into the brook went Mr. Wizard. Into the mud he fell. What a naughty trick! <coughs> tricks, tricks, tricks. Alex played a lot of tricks. He tricked Gus Goblin. He tricked Emily Elf. Alex even played a trick on Goody Goodwitch. Goody Goodwitch had some ducks. <coughs> She liked to use duck eggs in her witch's brew. Alex hid by the ducks. This will be a good trick," he said. Along came Goody. Her arms were full of eggs. 
Boo! 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 yelled Alex. Goody Goodwinch jumped. Up went the eggs. Down they went. Splat! 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 Eggs splattered everywhere. Oh, no, said Goody. What a mess. What a bad trick to play. Alex looked at the mess. I am tricky, said Alex, but I am not a bad elf. I will clean up the eggs. Goody looked at Alex. It was a bad trick, she said. But I still like you. My magic will clean up the mess. My magic wand will do the cleaning. <coughs> Out came Goody's magic wand. Now you will see a good trick, Goody said. The witch tapped the splattered eggs. Mess, vanish, she said. Boom! What good magic! The mess vanished. The splattered eggs were gone. What a trick, Alex yelled. I cannot see the eggs. Are the eggs invisible? Goody Goodwitch looked at the elf. The mess is not invisible. It is gone. But I can make things invisible. Look at this duck. Alex watched. Goody tapped the duck with her wand. Boom! The duck disappeared. <coughs> the duck is invisible, said the witch. It is here, but you cannot see it. Quack, quack! Alex heard the duck. He looked and looked, but he could not see anything. I like this trick, he said. Watch again, said Goody. She tapped the invisible duck with the wand. Boom! The duck was now visible. It could be seen. I would like to be invisible, said Alex. An invisible elf could play a lot of tricks. Will you make me invisible? Goody thought about making Alex invisible. Would it be a good thing to do? She thought and thought. Goody thought of a plan. <laughs> I will make you invisible, she laughed. Goody tapped Alex with the wand. But she did not do real magic. Am I invisible? asked Alex. Goody laughed. <laughs> I cannot see you, the witch said. But she could see him. Alex Elf was visible. <coughs> Goody had a good plan. She was going to trick Alex. All of Alex's friends would trick him too. Only you can see yourself, said Goody. To everyone else, you are invisible. Alex laughed. Good, he said. Away went invisible Alex. <coughs> Goody went to see Mr. Wizard. She went to see Gus Goblin and Emily Elf. Everyone liked Goody's plan. Everyone laughed and laughed. <coughs> so, Alex is now invisible, laughed Mr. Wizard. What a good plan, said Emily. What a funny trick, said Gus. They all went away laughing. <coughs> Alex was going by the brook. He saw Mr. Wizard. I will trick him, said Invisible Alex. I do not even have to hide. I cannot be seen. I will surprise him. Alex thought he was invisible, but he was visible. Mr. Wizard saw him, but he pretended not to see the elf. Alex jumped up. Boo! he yelled. Mr. Wizard ducked. Splash! Into the brook went Alex. Mr. Wizard laughed. Away he went. That trick was not very nice, said Alex. I tricked myself. <coughs> Out of the brook came Alex. So far, being invisible was not much fun. And Alex wanted to have fun. He wanted to trick someone. Alex went to see Gus Goblin. Gus was playing in the mud. He liked mud. Gus was making mud pies. Ribbit, ribbit. This will be fun, said Alex. An invisible elf can play a lot of funny tricks. I will make Gus jump. Up to Gus went Alex. Gus saw the elf coming, but he pretended he did not see Alex. Gus had a plan. Meow. Boo! Boo! yelled Alex. Gus jumped. Up went a mud pie. Down it went. Where did it go? Splat! 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 The mud splattered all over Alex. Mud here, mud there. What a mess! Away went a muddy, invisible elf. This is not good, said Alex. My tricks are not very funny. I will go see Emily Elf. I like Emily. Emily Elf was with Goody Goodwitch. Emily and Goody were having pie. 
Emily was a very good pie maker. Pie, said Alex. I like Emily's pies. I do not want to be tricky now. Alex went up to Emily. May I have some pie? Asked Alex. Emily laughed. She looked around. Who said that? Asked Emily. Who asked for pie? I did not ask for pie, said Goody. I did, yelled Alex. Who are you? Asked Emily. I am Alex Elf, Alex said. Where are you? Asked Emily. I cannot see you. Is this a trick? Oh, no, yelled Alex. Goody used her magic wand on me, though magic made me invisible. No one can see me. I can see you, said Mr. Wizard. He had come for pie. I can see you too, said Gus Goblin. He had come for pie. Do you mean I am not invisible? asked Alex. That's right, said Goody. I played a trick on you. I did not use real magic. Emily laughed. We all played a trick on you, she said. Alex laughed. I thought it was funny to be tricky, he said. But I do not like tricks anymore. I will never play another trick on my friends. Good for you, said Alex's friends. Now, let's all have pie, said Emily. Everyone got some pie. The pie looked good. Alex looked at his pie. He laughed. Watch this, said Alex. Now I will do magic. I will make this pie vanish. And he did. The end. <laughs> Stone Soup Long, long ago, in a faraway land, some soldiers were marching home from war. They were very tired, for they had traveled a great distance. They were also very hungry. The soldiers would have welcomed even a small bowl of soup. But how could they make soup? They had nothing to put into a pot except the stones they found in the road. And who ever heard of stone soup? In the distance, the soldiers saw a small village. They thought about the comfortable beds and the delicious foods they might find there, and they walked a little faster. I would be happy to get a loaf of warm bread and a nice bed to sleep in, said one soldier. I would be glad to get even one slice of bread and a warm barn to sleep in, said another. We will be lucky to find a few stale crust before we are chased from the village, said the third. He knew that the townspeople would not want to share what they had with strangers. Still, we can ask, said the first soldier. Yes, agreed the second. If we do not ask, we will never know. All right, said the third. You will ask, then you will know. The townspeople had seen the soldiers coming, and now they were busy hiding their food. They hid their potatoes down in their cellars. They tuck their vegetables under their beds. They stuff their barley into their pillowcases. They hung their meat inside their closets, and they lowered pails of milk down into the wells. At last, all the food in the entire village was hidden. The villagers went inside their houses and waited. When the soldiers arrived, they knocked on the first door they saw. Could you spare some food and a place to sleep? They asked. But the villagers said they had no extra beds and too little food for themselves. So the soldiers went to the next house, and the next, and the next. The answer was always the same. There was no food. There was no place to sleep. Then one of the soldiers had an idea. Good villagers, he called. Since you have no food, perhaps you will let us borrow a large cooking pot. Then we can make a pot of stone soup. Stone soup, whispered the villagers. Who ever heard of stone soup? This is something we must find out about, whispered the mayor. Someone bring a pot, quickly. When the pot had been brought to the village square, the soldiers filled it with water and built a fire beneath it. Finding good soup stones is the most important part, they said. Then they looked and they looked. 
Finally, each soldier found some nice, smooth stones. They put the stones into the pot and brought the water to a boil. Then they sniffed. Something is missing, said the first soldier. Yes, agreed the second. But what? Salt and pepper, said the third, sniffing the soup. Then he turned to the villagers and said, We know you have no food, but could you find a bit of pepper and some salt? Pepper and salt will bring out the flavor of the soup stones. At once, the mayor's wife disappeared and came back with some salt and pepper. Thank you, said the soldiers as they shook the salt and pepper into the pot. It smells better already. They all sniffed the soup. Then one of the soldiers said, A good stone soup should have some onions. But since there are none, we will simply do without them. A peasant woman heard the soldier and said, I may have an onion or two. And she hurried home. Soon, she returned with half a dozen peeled onions, which she dropped into the soup. This will be a good stone soup, said the soldiers. It's a pity we don't have any celery, but that would be hoping for too much. After all, we were lucky to find such good soup stones in the first place. A farmer's wife heard this and ran home. In a few minutes, she returned with several stalks of celery, which she cut into small pieces and tossed into the soup. After a while, the first soldier said, Something is lacking. There are no carrots, agreed the second. But there is no sense in asking for something that no one has, added the third. Then a peasant said, Carrots? I might just have one or two carrots at home. And he ran off to get them. He returned with several crisp orange carrots, which he sliced into the soup. The stones are cooking nicely, remarked the soldiers. Just smell the soup. Too bad we don't have a few potatoes. But why wish for something you can't get? A farmer overheard this and hurried away. Soon he was back with an arm full of potatoes. The soldiers peeled them and tossed them into the soup. Then the first soldier stirred the soup, saying, It is a bit too thin, but since there is no barley to thicken it, we will have to be satisfied. The town miller heard this and ran to his mill. Soon he returned with some barley which he stirred into the soup. A perfect stone soup, said the first soldier. If only it were a bit richer, suggested the second soldier. Too bad we have no milk to stir in. And before long, someone had brought him a bucket of milk for the soup. The third soldier said, With a bit of meat, it would be just like the soup we made for the king last month. But since there is no meat, we must be content with what we have. The villagers buzzed with excitement. The soldiers had dined with the king. The townspeople ran to their houses and came back with big chunks of meat, which they put into the soup. When at last the stone soup was ready, the soldiers tasted it. It is thick, said the first. It is rich, said the second. It is fit for a king said the third. Now the villagers decided that if the soup were really fit for a king, then it could not be served alone. So they brought out loaves of bread and roasts and barrels of cider. Long tables were set in the village square, and everyone sat down to eat. And all the villagers agreed that the soup was thick, rich, and fit for a king. They could hardly believe it had been made from stones. They ate and drank and danced well into the night. Then they took the soldiers into their homes and let them sleep in the most comfortable beds. In the morning, everyone gathered again in the village square. Thank you for everything, said the soldiers. We want to thank you, said the mayor. You have taught us something important. Goodbye, called the soldiers as they headed down the road. Goodbye, called the mayor. Imagine, whispered the townspeople, thick, rich soup made from stones. No one will ever believe it. After all, who ever heard of stone soup? The End. Thank <laughs> you.